Uh, can you clarify how the model was built? Uh, in particular, I guess, was the neural network used? Uh, the model is a, a neural fuzzy system, and, and it is not one uh, neural network, actually. It's an ensemble of multiple neural networks, and then we have intelligent agents that sit on top of all the uh, models and identifies what has to be done at one time, at what time. And of course, as you saw, we, we use fuzzy pattern recognition in order to feed the model. All right, um, and another one, just I guess it's good to talk about this, is uh, it looks like the data or the design is limited to the range of the historical data. That is uh, very correct. Yeah. Yes. I think so it's always a good point to clarify. <laughs> absolutely. It's always, uh, that's always true. These systems are fantastic interpolators. They're not very good extrapolators. Uh, and you may be want to extrapolate, if, you, if you're using 20 parameters dealing with, if you want to extrapolate on one parameter or two parameter, you may still get reasonable answer, but, but mm, I, I, you, know, you, can, you can do things outside of that at your own risk. All right. Um, net thickness. How do you factor in the phases change in reservoirs and operation, uh, operator non-accounting for these changes? Um, yeah, I'll just leave that part right there. Well, the, the phases changes, for example, here in, in, in Marcellus, uh, you have uh, two or three of them throughout uh, a very distinct one uh, throughout the uh, the Marcellus. What you can do, actually, you can uh, individually separate them. For example, in, in one of our analyses, we had uh, lower Marcellus, upper Marcellus, uh, and then we had uh, combined. Uh, so we, we anal analyze them separately, and we combine them and an analyze them again to figure out, and we, we very clearly we can find out which uh, facies is actually contributing most into our production. Uh, by doing that type of analysis. We were very successful to find that out uh, using com only data, which at, uh, for this particular analysis that we did, it confirmed what the geologists and petrophysicists believe it's happening. So the data confirmed, al although the raw data wouldn't show it at all, but our analysis showed that what they were uh, uh, assuming was absolutely correct. All right. Um, when doing your analysis, did you... Uh use fractal techniques to predict shale permeability? No. The shale permeability actually was provided as a function of porosity by the operator, but we didn't use it at all because it is an interpretive data, and we try to stay away from it as much as we can. Right, and then can you describe how the history matching process works, uh, and what are the adjustment parameters that are used? Uh, the way you do history, this is a very detailed, involved uh, 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 question that probably can be answered right now. That process is a process we call top-down modeling. It's a process that we uh, developed uh, and, and applied to multiple assets, uh, offshore, onshore, carbonate, uh, plastic, and now we are applying it to shale. Uh, and this is a process through which we perform, uh, it's, we use the term history matching simply because it is uh, 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 known to petroleum engineers and ourselves uh, are being petroleum engineers, uh, we, we try to coin this, uh, this technology, but it's very different with the type of uh, what you classically know as history matching and reservoir modeling. So what we do, we develop a, uh, a, a data set, a spatial temporal data, data set, although I tell you that we do not start with physics, but, but we all know that to a certain extent, a diffusivity uh, equation uh, works in, in fluid flow through porous media. The details of it may be different, double porosity, double permeability, uh, uh, stress-related permeability and porosity and so forth. But the fact is that generally a diffusivity equation works. That essentially means that from a reservoir engineering point of view, pressure is a function of space and time. And uh, we try to build our data set using that uh, concept. In other words, what we try to do during this top-down modeling process is to teach reservoir engineering to a computer. And the only language we can use to do that is data. So 
uh, th therefore, given that definition, uh, what we try to do is uh, to uh, we, we first we we perform uh, this fuzzy pattern recognition that, that I explained here, and we identify before we go to the modeling, we identify uh, from a very large number of uh, dimensions or, or parameters that's available to us, which ones are the most uh, influential and contributing the most to this process. And at that point, we use a series of, uh, once we're done with that, we, we use a series of data-driven uh, machine learning techniques. Uh, whereby we use this uh, supervised uh, uh, learning techniques where we, are we, we provide these inputs uh, and uh, we constrain the space and time and then we uh, try to match it with the production that we see from the well. And it goes through a training process whereby uh, what we change during that uh, uh, learning process is what we, it's called the synaptic connections. Uh, between the strength of different parameters to each other and how they correlate with one another until we uh, we do that until it, it uh, converges. And there are some times that you have trouble converging, then you find out that your parameters have to be changed or, uh, or tuned or uh, probably you have to use some of the parameters that you are using are, are, are more noise than information and there are some that are more information than noise that you didn't use. So it's a, it's a, it's a process through which uh, uh, there is art involved in it, but the tool that you, you use can actually guide you through this process and makes it uh, reasonably easy to do it.